And so what I want to, um, Vanessa and Stu, what I want to do is kind of a story about um, the neighborhood, about the crime, obviously, about the situation that has created you, mm -hmm. or the situation that um, has led to you doing what you're doing and becoming this viral uh, monster, I guess. Uh, not monster, but becoming this national figure, so to speak. So you, what think I, you think it's national? I mean, I'm just asking. I mean, it's all, I mean, even before I, you know, because I don't look at like, I saw the world hip hop. Yeah, world hip I'm on a lot of different lists. You if I take this? No. Is that okay? I'm on a lot of different listservs and Facebook, and they were just, different videos would pop up every now and then. So I was like, you know, maybe you should, you know, do something on it. So it's obviously natural. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm going to check with the world hip hop to see how many hits this guy. I don't know what other sites it's on, but I'm sure it's got more than a million hits. Mm -hmm. They said it had a million hits at Web World Star and all embedded sites in a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know, but anyway, so, go ahead and ask your question. So let me uh, let me start with. So you're you're um, you talked about the problem. Tell me the problem as you see it, or the situation in this area as you see it. Um, just ongoing for the last 13 years that I've been in the south uh, south downtown. Um, we're not getting any help. Right, it's, uh, I haven't raised it properly, but we try to follow the proper channels, calling 911, meeting with the city, city council, mayor's office, chief of police, man, uh, MARTA, officials. And they keep on promising cameras, foot patrol, that will address the issue. And then, Within a few weeks, all that attention goes away. The next official, the next mayor, the next come on, chief of police comes in and acts like they've never heard that there's a problem, and it all starts over again. Either they promise foot patrols or they say they don't have enough manpower. Business owners, a lot of them don't seem to care. The business, business owners don't care about what's going on. Uh, they turn a blind eye. <laughs> business owners that do care don't have any support. We keep on being told from the city and from the uh, Chief of Police that their change doesn't happen over time. It's been 13 years. You know, how many how many decades do we have to wait? Because the area is great. It's got you know great historical buildings. It's got a backbone. It's centrally located. It could be such a great asset to the city. But I just feel it's a policy of containment where they pushed all of the drug dealers and the addicts and the drunks away from the tourist area down here. Keep them all out of sight, out of mind. So what difference has he made? Has he made a difference? Um, huge. I mean, he's got the camera and he can show what everybody has to deal with daily living down here and conducting business down here. Um, we have a hundred plus criminals in downtown that either come to downtown to transact business, he's helped us get that list, either come downtown to transact narcotics, sell stolen merchandise, gamble. These are people that get arrested, come back out, and continue to do business within three city blocks. This is an area filled, you know, with with criminals. These are all people that I see, Stewart sees, people that are Where'd you get those from? Boone County. From the police? Yeah, yeah, Boone County. And there's probably a hundred more people I can put in here. Uh -huh. yeah, it's, it's a revolving door. You can get arrested, they come back in the street. And what we want to say to, to the city is that if there is no crime being down here, how come these people are standing down here in front of businesses 
people that are felons, convicted felons, that stay down here all day, but there's no life there. And these are the people that Darian is kicking out of the Metro Law. They're all over. They're going in and out of the underground, um, retail locations, sports profile is another is another great. He, he actually wanted to come. He's another business owner. He's up there. He can speak to this too sports as a business profile. owner. Yeah, sports profile. If you don't, if you can stop by there, he would love to talk to you. He just could yeah, come down. He's one of the there. business owners that's trying to do right. But then you have Fox Market on 90 Broad Street. You know that we have place crack has houses, five, five prostitution. Years. I mean, gambling houses, it is all, oh. and we can point them out to you and tell you that this is going on. Yeah, we've gone through, for Fox yeah. Market, we've gone through the, the license review board, we've contacted the police, the narcotics, the radio, they videotaped it, and yet he's still operating with a liquor license and selling drugs out of there every day. This is the one on Broad Street? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Across from the federal building. Yeah. yeah, but I think yeah. Yeah. people are shot at least once a year from criminals in there. Prosecute for the daycare, but nobody seems to care about shutting it down. There's a business owner over there that has collected the gun shells over the years of all the shootings that have gone on on that block. He's got a whole thing of gun shells that he just picks up from his from his business. <laughs> well, what Darren's done is provided the video to prove what we say is going on. The police say, "Oh, the statistics." say the crime is down. But if you don't fill out a police report, they're not going to be. So here, here's how it goes. There was an incident yesterday outside my building where I was talking to Vanessa on the phone. Somebody walks into my, unfortunately my camera wasn't running then, uh, <clears throat> where he walked into my building and I pushed him out. There was a, a disturbance at the back of the building which I was involved in, some of which is on camera. And an officer showed up, it dispersed the situation. Nobody got arrested. And heck, I could have been arrested for disorderly conduct. They could have been arrested for disorderly conduct. But how you keep the statistic off the books is you break up the incident and then it never gets reported. So <clears throat> there's something that I put on uh, Atlanta's Downtown Criminal Culture Facebook page. And it's kind of written here. But I also think that the city, you know, everybody gets it. Well, I don't say everybody, but I'm getting my 15 minutes of fame right now. And it, it was by accident. They were supposed to be famous, the criminals and not me. And I think the city is waiting for it to die down and just go away so they don't have to address it. And uh, I, I don't know, if are you familiar with uh, uh, Janelle Monet? I feel like I'm tipping on the tightrope. So if you understand that reference, that's what I feel like it is. And then, you know, like I said, I put out a statement last night in general. It's, it's a little, it's a little convoluted, but you'll be able to find. It. Yeah, you'll be able to find it out because <clears throat> it comes to my understanding that the city wants some of the residents and the business owners down here to foot the bill to police their area with private policing, which is probably off-duty officers. But that's freaking ridiculous. One block away is the administrative district for the city of Atlanta. Uh, is this city so mismanaged that it cannot uh, uh, clean up its own doorstep? That it cannot get rid of drug dealers, con artists, people who bring merchandise down here just to sell it stolen? I got video of somebody who, who frequents the area where I brought a pair of uh, Beats by Dre headphones that came from the Georgia State University for $160. These things cost $300. He said he paid $120. He probably paid less than that. You know, but everybody, is, you know, where did they come from? Well, apparently, because when you hear me, when you look at this video, I said, oh man. This is Georgia State University, you know, bookstore.org, Georgia State University. Uh -huh. And he pulls off the sticker. Oh, I didn't know that I was supposed to, you know, pull off the sticker. But no, I got cell, uh, stolen mm -hmm. cell phones, I got stolen computers, I got... I got stolen computers, I got, I got stolen clothes, a guy by the name of Leron Littman, uh -huh. L-A-R-O-N. 
L I T M O N. Uh -huh. Bring stolen merchandise into the area. He's a booster. He just took a charge out in Cobb County for a felony uh, shoplifting. So you can check that out because his name is Leron Litton. Um, it's that shop two doors down from me that sells all the Air Postal stuff that they were stealing from the Linux store. Oh yeah. oh yeah, now you got petty guys who will who will uh, rob the CVS, rob a Walgreens, rob a Walmart or a Kroger, and then come in, you know, come into my business, right, and sell it. Now I can't say that it's, I can suspect that it's stolen, but I can't absolutely say that it's stolen, even though I know that it's stolen. You know what I mean? Um, so how long have you been? How long have you been? One year. One year. So why did you? Why do you do this? I mean, did it start out this way? I went, when I got hired. I got hired as a security officer. Okay. Okay. Are and I. Okay. Yeah. And they had chased out the two previous security personnel, and they were basically armed security guards. There's a difference between a security officer and security guard. Security guards know absolutely nothing. They will do absolutely nothing. But they chased them off. And these were armed guys? Yeah, uh -huh. they chased them off. So when they hired me, well, when they, when they hired my company, the company hired me because the company's based in Detroit. And basically how it went is I got a call from somebody that says apply to this company, they need some help down here. Uh -huh. when, I, when I spoke to the, to the, uh, uh, to the property manager, I, did, I didn't tell him I would manage his problem. I told him I would solve his problem. What kind of problem? I would solve his problem. Okay, okay. You know. Let me just interject that that mall that he's in has been has, has been a a source of pestilence in this neighborhood for years. I mean, before he got there, uh -huh. I'm yeah, talking tons been. of gambling. I mean, all types of illegal activity, counterfeit drugs. It was just filled with it. My window is right below the Metro Mall, okay. so we can see it. So that's what he's saying when he's saying he was hired to clean it up. <laughs> this problem has been going on. Yeah, it's for, been going for on for a long time. Okay. Yeah, the, the 82 Beach Tree was also another place, but they shut it down and everyone moves in the higher density over to Metro Mall. Yeah, the vendors wanted somebody in there because there's, you know, there's fighting, there's drug selling, there was prostitution, there were snatch robberies, there were armed robberies, all happening within there. There were people just loitering in there for the purpose of uh, selling drugs, loitering for the purposes of con gangs, uh, uh, which is basically the three car Monty. You didn't use the shell game. They do it on the sidewalk, right? The top should be across the street. Of the, of the and this is, and this is it's the same people. And I was telling your, your photographer, there's an officer that usually posts at the corner of Alabama and Peachtree, but where he posts, he can't see anything. And even if he could, I mean, halfway up the block on Peachtree is the center of the weed trade for downtown. And then on Alabama and Broad, which is back as to, and on Broad is the center of the hardcore drug trade, which he has no view of. So the city saying they don't have enough people down here or enough resources. Has APD even bothered to do an investigation of, to see how effective that the personnel that they have down here are? <laughs> do they need more personnel? Does, or what else needs to be done differently? I mean, because what happened? You'll never see an ambassador on Box Street. But, really? Well, every once in a while now. If they're uh, walking through somewhere else, but they don't stay <laughs> there. Okay. The ones I've talked to say they won't. They will not be posted there because it's not safe. They don't have guns. I mean, you've described it as something that I didn't know. Something called like hamster van, yeah. which you can throw in there on the wire, which I think is very fitting. Susan I mean, Oliver says a, that Miami did the same thing. They, they are concentrating the criminal activity in one location and allowing this to happen. So as long as it doesn't. As long as it's not violent, yeah. you know. As long as it, you know. That that's to me what exactly it is. Would you agree? Oh, when I first got here, it was damn near open air drug market. Oh, it was an open air. Drug I could stand there and like, wow, these. I, I, in my mind, I said these drug dealers are sloppy. I'm just standing here and I'm like, this. He's selling. He's selling. Oh, he's using cigarettes to pass. He's doing this. He's doing that. He's doing this. It was just ridiculous. They go for the cigarette, but they're passing the drugs when they're holding the cigarette. I mean, it's, we have a video from 2008 where Broad Street had 80 people 
people out there all day long, just doing drugs, buying and selling. It's all. Right oh, you should put that on the web page. In the Facebook page. So it was open air drug market in the Metro Mall? Oh, yeah, it was that too. It was that too. On Peachtree Street, on Broad Street, on MLK, Metro Mall, they didn't even have to go into undercover inside the building because it was happening. It's still happening on the street. Yeah, it was still happening on the street. And it Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, people are out all on the corner of MLK and Broad selling. Call the police, they can turn the road and turn the other way. <laughs> they do. It, they do. Like we had to summers, hire our own off duty officer yeah, we had, in the we, building to address our issues. We so bought yeah. a foreclosed unit in our building and put an officer in there who lives there rent free so that he can patrol the area so that we'll be semi safe. To help us with this collecting, you know, evidence. So, so, this, so you, you said that, uh, I want to go back a little bit, you said that you told the manager that you would solve the problem? Yeah, I would solve the problem. And what, and what do you mean, what did you mean by that? I mean get rid of the problem. Okay. Nothing exists in the vacuum, exists in the context of one another. You can't be an oasis in a pile of shit, right? You know,